Hello, let me start by saying, I, I don't even say that anymore. Let me start by saying, let me, see, I don't even have anything to start. See, that, I, that's why I let go that, that opening because I don't always have something I have to say before I start a video, so I just carry on. So anyway, I'm checking out everybody's favorite movie, Hannah Montana's IMDb page. Yay! And this computer is not typing anything, even though I'm... Oh, good lord. If I mention this computer, it's kind of slow. Oh, there it is. Yeah, this computer is pretty slow. I mean, I'm pretty used to it, but I can't imagine you being used to it. Wait, hold on. I have to close the window. Sorry, I had... Sorry about the obvious cut. I had to close the window, otherwise... You would occasionally hear the sound of airplanes whatever let's type Han Montana oh, I'll get to you but first you Hannah Montana the movie the best movie of all times highly recommendable oh yay Hmm, this rating seems is accurate enough. I mean, now this cover is pretty deceiving. The majority of the movie takes place in Tennessee. Why do we need to see this picture? There's only like a, what, three minute scene where she's actually in the beach? Or maybe more, but still, I highly doubt it passes ten minutes. So why, why even put it in this poster? You know, when I first watched this movie, I actually thought that a big part of the movie would take place in the beach. But no, it doesn't. It takes place here. I thought the movie would be, we get, we would see more of this side of her and this side of the cover. But no, we didn't get to see that. But whatever, that actually doesn't, that actually doesn't disappoint me because it's not the fact that I didn't see enough of Hannah Montana. My reason for hating this movie. My reason for hating this movie is well, it's garbage. Oh well, look, I read it. I read it. The show seven. Hmm. I think it was last year, or twenty fourteen. It was out of pity. Oh well, look, they updated the pictures. Obviously. I wanna check the C. Wait, there's no parental guide. Are you freaking kidding me? But that's like the best part. There really is no parental guide? Oh my god. This has no parental guide. No parental guide What's the freaking ever. Oh my god. Nobody give a crap about this movie. To the point where they didn't even add anything. <sighs> oh my god. How, how am I supposed to have fun? I wanted to talk about sex and nudity, violence and gore, profanity, alcohol, and frightening about this movie. I know it doesn't have, but it would be pretty funny to talk about these topics. But, okay. Since the beliefs that parents... Oh, wait, I've just heard this before. It doesn't even have to do with a movie. Well, at least we have... At least there's certifications here. Mm. Wait, zero? People with zero of age can watch this? It's kind of insane, although... Or maybe that's not what it means. To be fair, I don't really care. Mm. Man, this reading is so accurate. Although, not completely, because the 2016 Pop of Girls is really 3.6. I don't like that show, but that show is much better than this. It is much more satisfying watching the 2016 Pop of Girls than watching this movie. Oh, Lord. Good Lord, good Lord. I think maybe the biggest problem with that movie is that, well, the story is not very, it's not very well told. Like they're trying to be a great movie. I'm a guy. I'll get to you later. I think that for me the problem with that movie is that it's trying to be romantic, but. He scrubbed that. It's trying to be a story about 
Hannah Montana appreciating her appreciating her home, but we don't really get to see much of that. She just kind of says that at the end that she always has to find her way back home, even though there's no way she could have learned that because nothing about the movie implies that she learned something about learning how to appreciate her origins or her place. In fact, the beginning of the movie was actually going well, like, the, not, not, not in the way you think. You see, the beginning of the movie, they're actually addressing how Miley is consumed by her pop star life, but then they just forgot about it. <sighs> I just wanted to comment on how completely ridiculous is that a grown, the grown people and older teenagers are commenting how stupid, obnoxious, childish, unfunny, etc. this movie was. I am a, I am a mother of five children aged 12 to 2. Um, shouldn't it be age 2 to 12? <laughs> Whatever. My three daughters are 11 and two nine-year-old, two nine-year-olds. They love this movie and left their little butts. Really? I don't even remember laughing at this movie when I was a kid. Although I'm, I like it more than I like today. Granted, there were many parts of the movie where I was bored to tears. I actually played a few games on my iPod. Touch I'd brought along. Really? But again, this movie wasn't made for me. It was made for small children and it literally wasn't that bad. Oh, it really wasn't that bad, sorry. Um, yes it is, but anyway, I mean, come on. We've all been watching Disney movies forever now, haven't we? Like, you can't figure it out who will die, who will win, who will lose, who will kiss whom, etc. In any Disney movie, so why can't she? So so she can't act. Who cares? Cause all the Disney actors these days can't act. They are wooden and pathetic, but the children like them. Stop being so judgmental about movies that was geared towards seven to ten year old little girls. Okay, it's just silly. Well, I think what you're saying is silly. I mean. <sighs> Wouldn't you? Wouldn't, wouldn't it be better for you if you saw a, qual uh, a quality movie? I mean, okay, I, I'm not saying that th this movie was targeted towards you. In fact, this movie was obviously targeted to kids. But even kids, even movies that are targeted to kids can be good. Parents can enjoy movies that were that were aimed to kids. In fact, there are many movies I can give examples to you that were that were targeted to kids, but parents enjoy. Because there are, g oh my god, I'm speaking so badly, what's wrong with me today? Actually, my English isn't always good, because English isn't my first language, so sometimes I kind of make these kind of mistakes, but whatever. Oh, I'm also, I'm kind of, I'm not very good with talking, I'm not very, I'm not much of a talking person, and I'm very shy, so, I tend to act like this, I tend to talk slowly and um, some words may not come right because I'm just like that even in my even in my first language which is Portuguese I also talk like that because I'm just like that so where was I oh um, yeah you say it yourself the movie, the movie isn't that good and so if it isn't that good shouldn't someone point out that it's not good so because it's for kids we should just let it as it is you just say, oh, it's a movie for kids, and we're not going to point out how bad it is, because it's for kids, and kids don't need smartly written movies. That's exactly what you're saying. I mean, don't you want your movie, your kids to watch good movies? I mean, even if even if someone actually did say something bad about a movie, it's not like it's going to keep the kids from watching. They're still going to watch it anyway. So, what is your problem? I mean... I mean, I understand what you're trying to say. We shouldn't be surprised that this movie doesn't appeal to us because it was aimed to kids. But that's the problem. That that's a bad way to think. We shouldn't let movies. We shouldn't cut movies some slack simply because they were aimed to kids. I mean, we should criticize movies that were aimed for kids just as much as we criticize movies that were made for adults. They're they're still movies. It's just an age rating difference. See. Still, it's, it's the same movie. 
<laughs> what? Wait, did I say difference? It's difference, right? It's difference. So anyway, those, they, both of them are movies. Movies that are aimed for kids and movies that are aimed for adults are still movies, and we should criticize even if some is leaning towards kids than adults because the fact that it's aimed for kids shouldn't keep it from being a good movie. And yeah. Also, people can post whatever they want, so yeah. Just like you, you post something what you want, so yeah. I hope anyone who's a parent or is a relative of young girls will overlook the negative review comments from what appears to be adult men. I saw the movie today with my sister and her eight-year-old granddaughter. We all loved it and we laughed a lot. Anyone who was who as a young girl father too, I think will enjoy this film. It's not going to win an Oscar for acting, but it sure gets my vote for a light <sighs> entertainment. I like the music from both Miley Cyrus and Taylor Swift. They have different styles. I'm puzzled at the number of men who were, who were reviewing this mo a movie that is designed for little girls. I selected a couple of the reviewers who gave the movie one star and looked at some of their other reviews. I one case his favorite movie contained a lot of violence and bloodshed. At any rate, I give it an 8 because it successfully did what it set out to do. This is to let a lot of little girls and their loved ones have a good time. Okay, um, first of all, I agree with you that the songs played by Miley Size and Tula Surf look kinda nice. Um, they're not really my type of music, but I thought it fit the movie well, and two, um, for some reason people seem to think that only adult men hate this movie. I know 19 year old girls who also don't like this movie, so what do I have to say about them? Three, you're just you're now admitting that this movie is not gonna win an Oscar, so. If this movie is not gonna win an Oscar, shouldn't someone have shouldn't someone have the right to tell why? I mean, isn't that the point of comments? Isn't that the point of reading movies to point out what's wrong with him? And it's not just it's not because it's designed for little girls. It means that we shouldn't point out those those problems. And by the way. A movie that's specifically designed for little girls. Do you really call that? A movie worth eight out of ten. Movies should movies should know how to aim to everyone. Yes, it's normal for a movie to have a to have a main targeted demographic, but even so, these movies can still be enjoyed by other demographics. I mean, look at um um some superhero movies. I mean, I think it's fair to say that superhero movies, the main target demographic, are nerds, but I know a lot of people that are not really nerds, but enjoy those movies. I mean, there are a lot of also horror horror movies that... No, not horror movies, that's a bad example. A lot of movies that are clearly aimed... Primarily aimed to men, but women still like. Even movies that are primarily aimed for women, men still like. It's not because this movie is designed for little girls, it means that... That it's unfair to people point out that this movie is bad. I mean, if this movie is designed for little girls and it doesn't and it doesn't appeal to men, it doesn't necessarily mean that that the movie didn't do anything wrong. It just means that the movie failed at appealing to older men. And heck, maybe that wasn't the problem. Maybe the problem is just it was really bad. Yep. And well, I don't really have much to say about her. Um. The part was was talked about a reviewer that gave that said that his favorite movie had a lot of violence and bloodshed. Yeah, I don't know who that reviewer was, so I'm not gonna make any assumptions. But I'm gonna point out that maybe they pointed out maybe he chose that movie as his favorite not because of the violence and bloodshed, but because it was good. But again, I'm not gonna make any assumptions because I don't even know what who she's talking about. Let me see the time. Five minutes. Ooh, I still have a, I still have a few minutes. Uh, it seems really long. I feel like it's just. 
No, you know what? Whatever. I'm gonna weep. No, really. The incredible lack of quality in this film is not only intensified by Miley Cyrus' lack of acting or singing skills, it is aggravated as the entire movie revolves around, revolves around her and her own inner struggle. Uh, uh? She is incapable of delivering her lines with any sort of credibility or patience whatsoever and has to rely on being loud and intense in order to keep people's attention. Um, that's a problem with the show, not this movie. I don't remember her being loud. You're addressing problems that doesn't don't really have anything to do with the movie. In fact, even Miley Cyrus acting, I mean, it wasn't the best, but I also wouldn't say it's the worst acting. I mean, I, I wasn't that bothered by her acting. I was more bothered by her character, but that's a problem for another day. Which I would suggest if you want to see my review on Hannah Montana the movie, you can check out my channel. But I'm gonna, but the quality of that video isn't that great in comparison to my recent videos. But whatever. She, where was I? Oh, that show, that showcase of her on-screen persona is similar to her on-stage performer. That's actually true. Well. Although that's also a problem with the show and not much of this movie, but whatever. In order to hide her obvious flaws in town, simply distracting the fandom, teenage girls usually between 6 and 13, with over-exaggerated moves and expressions tend to do the trick. Some people might call that being relatable or having a strange presence. I call that a plot to remain in the spotlight of 10-year-old girls. All while falling at overwhelming her character by dating a 20-year-old underwear model and uploading her naked pictures of herself in real life. I know exactly what he's talking about. Um, this actually happened in, I think it was 2009 or 2010, I don't really remember. Wait, 2009? Yeah, it was 2009, I, I remember that story. Yeah, it was pretty weird for me, I mean, it wasn't very, like, it was a, I, uh, when I saw that news, I, I had already watched Hannah Montana, the movie, the show, not really, um, and when I saw that news, I was like, whoa, did she really do that? I mean, that innocent character from that movie I watched was taking naked pictures. It was pretty, dis not disturbing, but just really weird. Billy Ray Sider, on the other hand, is the opposite of his daughter. Instead of overstating his single line and facial expression, he barely manages to pull them off with distance. I swear to you, his report, his repetor, his repertory, repertory of expressions and emotions is even smaller than the list of his musical hits. Uh, what time I have? Seems pretty long. I'm gonna skip this one. Sorry about that. You're addressing point, interesting points, but it's too long. I want to see other reviews. Well, this was a waste of time. Miley, Miley Stewart's Miley Cyrus life is out of balance, taken under the wing of a gungo and glamorous publicist, Vita. I mean, who is Vita? I mean, I've never seen her in a show. That's something I've never really understood. Where did she come from? When did they hire her? She just came up in the movie and never showed up again, not even in the show. Not before, not after. I, I don't understand that. This, I don't understand why they made that decision. Okay, I know. She was supposed to be the one influencing Miley to focus more on her pop star life. But man, where did she come from? Oh, that really annoyed me. When Hannah Montana ends up in the paparazzi capture flight with Tyra Banks over a pair of designed shoes, Miley's father quietly takes control. Having attempted to reason with her, why is this guy is just recapping the movie? That why? An okay film, I guess. A good conclusion to the series, but there's still its weak flaws. Hmm. I would never call this movie okay. With my laptop, with me, my sister, and me, decided to watch the Hannah Montana movie on YouTube last night. Ooh, wait, what year is this? 2009? That movie was on YouTube? Uh, 
I should probably address this but okay let me say I read a couple of reviews about this movie saying how poor the movie is but since I'm a fan uh you're a fan oh wait that's okay I'm, I'm, I also kind of like the movie N not movie sorry the show even though it's pretty bad I figured it was worth a watch I'm not saying the film's bad because it isn't. I have seen all the episodes of Hannah Montana and I thought they were pretty funny and cool. Mm. Funny, mm. Mm. kinda no. Um, cool, yeah, that show was not cool. It was cringy, but cringy doesn't mean cool. But I think most of the people who wrote bad comments just watched the movie instead of switching over to Disney Channel and figure what. HM was all about, so yeah. Mm. I watched Hannah Montana, I watched every single episode of that show. I'm not a hater, but I hate this movie. I wonder what she has to say about that. Okay, let's start off with a good side. One, I can say this movie did a good job bringing all the episodes in question together, putting in a great conclusion. Wrong! Wrong! This movie has nothing to do with the show. In the show, Miley, Miley focuses more on her personal life than her rock star life. And she and the episodes really address how she takes her rock star life out of hand. This movie didn't bring up anything that the show stood for. Plus, there are many things about it. I mean, the movie takes place in Tennessee. We've never even seen plots or stories that had to do with Tennessee other than the characters that came from Tennessee but not actual Tennessee I mean they don't even address much how Miley feels what's the word homesick I mean she shows signs that she's homesick but there's not much there's not many episodes where she says oh my god I'm homesick I wish I could come back or I wish I would never come back to Tennessee they don't mention they, they just reference Tennessee but they don't really they don't really have episodes addressing Tennessee or whatsoever only her mom and the family members what time it is three minutes cool this movie was like a whole new side of Hannah Montana yeah it's true it was a whole new side of Hannah Montana a side that's not really realistic because it was never there and it shouldn't exist in the first place because you just skip Malibu and the regular irritating laugh audience laughs yeah I guess that is an adventure of the movie it has it doesn't have laugh tracks which is good which, but and it's also drastic that the movie feels at being funny it feels at being more funny than the than the show I mean the show wasn't that funny but once in a while I did laugh, in this movie I just laughed once. And it wasn't even like a crazy laugh, it was just a chuckle. That's that's a bad sign. I mean it's it's a really bad sign when you realize that a movie with without a laugh track you're less funny. All you're doing is just motivating the laugh tracks, which is bad. And yeah. We see and hear in the HM episodes and go beyond the series exploring Miley's main hometown. Where, where you she actually, where you, uh, where she actually came from, and the choices she has to make. Huh. That was an interesting part of the movie. Too bad they wasted. The songs were top notch. My favorite ones were Hold Down, Throw Down, and Let's Get Crazy. Hmm. I don't like none of those songs. <laughs> uh, I like Butterfly Away and The Climb and Crazier from Taylor Swift. But Hold Down Throat and Let's Get Crazy I really don't like. Let's Get Crazy, I just... I don't know, it's because of the instrumental, the lyrics, or maybe both. Nah, it's the instrumental. I don't like the instrumental of that song. Hold Down Throw Down... Hmm. I don't know, it just didn't work for me. It kept a level balance of everything from laughs to the moments. I wish I would see the laughs. Because normally in the HM series you always get more of the funny parts rather than the real mo real moving parts. Well, I don't know. It's not really a 
issue for me. Um, I'm okay with Hannah Montana being more about comedy in the show. I mean, it is a primary genre, so yeah. And yeah, this movie was a little more real than most most of the episodes of Hannah Montana, which I guess is kind of fine. It was it was good work from Disney. Mm, nope, not that bad. Not the bad. No, it's now. Oh, now the bad. Sorry. It was good. Nope, but not great. Yes. I mean, it wasn't something new from Disney, like bringing it to a whole new level. It just kept sort of material that I normally expected. Although I, I, I said it was a whole new side. It was nothing special. The performances were average. Agree. I'm not seeing any energy being delivered. Hmm. I actually didn't notice that. It's probably true. The end was a big moment in the movie, but Cyrus sort of ruined that with her acting because it to not work as it, oh causing it to not work as dramatic. Sorry. Yeah, my Cyrus is kind of a bad actress. Mm, honestly, the end. <laughs> my problem wasn't the acting; it was just the whole concept of the end. It was doomed from the beginning. Spoilers ahead. When Miley rips off her wig, she said she can still be Hannah if everyone keep the secret. Sure, it's her be all of home time, but there's got to be one bad person who wants all the fame and money and blow her secret. I completely agree with you. That's actually one of the biggest problems I have with this movie. It's the ending. No one, apparently no one from Crawley Corners were greedy enough to post that picture, the picture, no sorry, take the picture of Miley without a wig, sorry not Miley, Oh, stupid narration, someone there apparently was not greedy enough to take a picture of Hannah without a wig and post it somewhere, I mean, shouldn't journalists be there, I mean, it's a crowd, not crowdfunding, it's a fundraising, including a teen pop sensation, someone, some journalists have to be there, someone taking pictures must take the pictures there, someone, I mean even crazy fans should have taken the pictures, someone should have revealed that, and the show, apparently they really did keep the secret, because in the show, when Miley revealed that she was Anna Montana, no, everyone was surprised, everyone, everyone except the people who didn't know, who already knew she wasn't Hannah. Which is stupid. Mm, where was I? Hold on, let me see what time. Five minutes. Dang it. Jackson's alligator incident was careless and pointless. Mm, not to mention out of place. That has got to be a very serious damage. True. For a normal human being, you could have needed brutal... You could have needed brutal surgery and well the film sort of took it as a practical joke. True. Completely agree with you. Does Mary try to reveal she's Anna Montana? To Travis to the reporter guy, she always says, I saved Anna Montana's life surfing and we're best friends. Stupid. Yep. Agree. Yeah. There's more bad than goods. <laughs> I'm not even sure that movie has a good now everyone knows she's best friends with Hannah Montana, why doesn't anyone use their brain? There's a lot of evidence her face, that that voice, those dance moves, yet no one, nobody had the right mind to figure out she's actually Hannah Montana. Really? Mm, I never noticed that. No, but what you're saying is actually true. It'll, that's not a problem with the movie, that's a problem with the entire franchise. Bad reporter turned to good reporter and now and not to blow Miley's secret. No, no, no. In real life, any normal reporter would just blow her secret. Huh, it was actually something I was mentioning before. There wasn't much shock when Hannah revealed she's Miley. Also, I found the ending quite confused and she just takes off her wig, sings, and the end? Unrealistic. Yeah. One more thing, sometimes Miley sings like she's got a cold or something, and I'll admit she can't dance. Hmm. Even if she did know how to dance, I'm not sure I would have liked, because I, I don't know, I'm not a big fan of watching dancing performances. 
Sorry for saying, but true. I have a few bad comments, but I'll leave it there for now. Okay, I'm not trying to say Hannah Montana the movie is a bad film, like I said. Yes, it is, but I say it's probably a mixed bag. Despite a few extra bad points I made, although it was very close to 4, I'd at least, I'd at the very least give it a 5. Just because I'm nice. Okay, movie overall. Not bad, I guess. 5 out of 10 stars. Hmm, well, I respect her opinion, and to be honest, out of all the posts I've seen her, she, her post is the one I agree the most, because the other people just seem to be ranting out of hatred. And the thing she said here, although I don't agree with everything she said, but I do understand some of the things she said, so props to that. It's not an okay movie for me, for me it's just bad, but okay, whatever. Mm, let's get out of here. You know, I wonder who directed this. Peter Chelmson. Uh, I'm not sure I should blame him. Writers, Dan Bird Birdson, Michael per Wait. I know this guy. He created Baby Daddy. Oh man. Oh no. Uh, to be honest, I kind of already knew that. I knew from the beginning that this. Uh, I already knew that the per the person who created Baby Daddy wrote for Hannah Montana. And I'll say this: when I figured out that, I saw Baby Daddy from a different perspective. Well. Um, my opinion towards that show didn't really change when I found out who created, but let's just say my perspective changed. Um, six wins? No. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Top box office films. Ugh. Best songs written for more motion picture, The Climb. Nominated. Hmm. Okay. Favorite movie actress. Oh, it's Kids' Choice Awards. I'm not gonna judge anything. Best song from a movie. The Climb. Breakout performance. Female. Nominated. That's right. Yep. That's right. Yeah. Stick with nominated. Or even not nominated. But come on. She's really. A, she's really not a good actress. What's with the breakup performance female? Ugh. There are many great fe female act wait female actress is that correct or I should just say actress yeah there are there are many good actresses that probably prefer, probably performed well oh MTV movie award okay sorry about that favorite family movie ugh. Maybe favorite crew, teen, tweeny, teen pandering movie. Razzie Awards. Don't even know what that is. Worst Supporting Actor. Oh, Razzie Award. It's that, it's those award about, uh, that have to do with like bad movies and stuff. I should probably check those awards. They sound kind of cool. Worst Supporting Actor. Hillary Cyrus, hmm. Now, I wouldn't blame them for nominating him as the worst supporting actor, but I don't think Billy Ray Cyrus was the thing that ruined the movie for me. In fact, for me, he was actually one of the best parts of the movie. Worst actress, nominated, huh? She should have won. Teen Choice Awards. Oh, good lord. She's probably gonna win everything. Choice movie actress. Choice movie see fit. Miley Cyrus. Ugh. Dang it. This is kind of a waste of time. This entire video is a waste of time. What am I even doing here? This is stupid. I'm stupid. I don't even know how to speak English. Well, actually I kind of do. I don't want to brag or anything, but... Come on, my English is my English isn't isn't that bad. I mean, 
I know some of the basic words. See, I even know how to say the word basic. Yay, because apparently that's enough to say that I know the basics of English. I am such a genius. What the heck am I doing here? No, no, seriously, what the heck am I doing here? Plot keywords? <laughs> you know, that's it. I, I have to end this video because this movie, this, 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 this video ended a long time ago. I'm just here browsing and wasting your time, probably. Yep, uh, yep, that's it. I'm ending this movie. Movie. Oh, stupid wordplay. I'm ending this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Bye for now. Yeah, that's it. I'm ending this video.